These are the new terms introduced in this lesson. It's important for you to understand. Welcome to the lesson on dimensions, tolerances, and notes used on drawings. The main focus of this course is geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. However, all dimensioning and tolerancing specifications are a critical part of an engineering drawing. This lesson explains other types of dimensions, tolerances, and notes often indicated on a drawing. This lesson is important because it shows you the proper uses and limitations of these drawing elements. Your goal for this lesson is to understand the types of dimensions, tolerances, and notes used on drawings. When you're finished with this lesson, you should be able to Describe three purposes of dimensions and tolerances. Identify which units of linear measurement apply on a drawing. Explain the options for expressing units of angular measurement. Explain four conventions used when metric units apply on a drawing. Describe three conventions used for angular dimensions. Describe the terms dimension, tolerance, and nominal size. Describe what limit dimensioning is. Describe what plus-minus tolerancing is. Describe what bilateral and equal bilateral tolerances are. Describe what a unilateral tolerance is. Describe what an unequal bilateral tolerance is. Interpret dimensional limits. Define a basic dimension. List two uses for a basic dimension. Describe where the tolerance for a basic dimension comes from. Describe local, flag, and general notes on drawings. Describe why CAD models need to communicate permissible tolerances. Describe how CAD models communicate permissible tolerances. It will take approximately 20 minutes to complete this lesson. These are the new terms introduced in this lesson. It's important for you to understand these terms in order to interpret drawings. Dimensions and tolerances are the elements that create clarity and precision on an engineering drawing. Without dimensions and tolerances, a drawing is no more than an artist's depiction of a part. Take a look at this figure. It shows examples of the three common uses of dimensions and tolerances, which are to communicate and document functional relationships, influence manufacturing choices, influence inspection choices. When the engineer creates a drawing, he uses the dimensions and tolerances to communicate and document functional relationships. The relationship between part surfaces is defined based on how they function in the product. The amount of tolerance allowed for each part surface represents the amount of deviation that will not degrade the functional requirements of the part to an unacceptable limit. The dimensions and tolerances on a drawing affect the choice of the type of machines, tools, and fixtures used to produce the part. Dimensions and tolerances also affect the process sequence used to produce the part. The dimensions and tolerances on a drawing influence inspection choices in the following ways. The datum system indicates how the part is to be held for measurement of tolerances. Basic dimensions orient and locate tolerance zones relative to the datums. Geometric tolerances describe the shape and size of the tolerance zones. The dimensions and tolerances are used to determine the choice of inspection tools, setup requirements, and acceptance requirements for a part. All engineering drawings should have the units of linear measurement specified. Commonly used English units are decimal inch, and commonly used metric SI units are millimeters. The units of linear measurement for dimensions and tolerances are typically specified in a general note or in a note in the title block. If the units of linear measurement are not specified, the drawing is incomplete. Angular dimensions on engineering drawings are specified as either decimal degrees or as degrees, minutes, and seconds. On the left is an example of an angular dimension specified in degrees and decimal parts of a degree. On the right is an example of an angular dimension specified in degrees, minutes, and seconds. On an engineering drawing, the units of linear measurement are specified in the title block or next to each dimension.
you're correct. On an engineering drawing, angular units are typically specified in degrees and in decimal parts of a degree, or in radians. You're correct. Click the right arrow to continue. Where metric units are specified, the following conventions are used. For the use of zeros, 1. A zero is always placed before the decimal point for dimensional values less than 1 millimeter. 2. Trailing zeros are always omitted after the last significant digit. 3. Zeros are used to maintain uniformity between high and low tolerance values. 4. A single zero is used without the plus or minus sign for all nil tolerance values. 5. A zero or decimal point is not shown where a dimension is a whole number. Also, a dimension may be specified with a different number of decimal places than its tolerance. An example is shown in balloon number 4. Which dimension does not use metric unit conventions? You're correct. Trailing zeros are always omitted after the last significant digit. Click the right arrow to continue. The use of zeros on angular dimensions. Where a dimension is less than one degree, you should place the zero before the decimal point. Where only minutes or seconds are specified, place a zero before the minutes and seconds specification. Whole number angles. If you're specifying in degrees only, follow the value with the degree symbol. Don't put a zero or decimal point after the degrees. When an angle is less than one degree, a zero should be shown before the decimal point. You're correct. Click the right arrow to continue. Dimensions and tolerances indicate the geometric characteristics of a part. Dimensions define the nominal geometry, and tolerances define the allowable variation from the nominal geometry. Here are the formal definitions for the terms dimension, tolerance, and nominal size. Dimension, a numerical value or values expressed in appropriate units of measure used to define the size, location, orientation, or form of a feature or surface or feature of size. Tolerance, the total amount that a specific dimension is permitted to vary the difference between the maximum and minimum limits. Nominal size, the designation used for the purpose of general identification. A dimension can be used to define the variation permitted for a feature of size. You're correct. Tolerances define how much variation is permitted for a dimension. You're correct. Click the right arrow to continue. Two common methods used to indicate tolerances are limit tolerances and plus-minus tolerances. A limit tolerance is where a dimension has its high and low limits stated. The high value is placed on top and the low value is placed on the bottom. A plus-minus tolerance is where the nominal of a dimension is given first, followed by a plus-minus expression of a tolerance. You can express a tolerance for a plus-minus dimension in several ways. If you use a bilateral tolerance, the dimension varies in both the plus and minus directions. If you use an equal bilateral tolerance, the allowable variation from the nominal value is the same in both directions. Using a unilateral tolerance specifies that the allowable variation from the nominal value is all in one direction and zero in the other. If you use an unequal bilateral tolerance, the allowable variation from the nominal value is not the same in both directions. On this drawing, which letter identifies a unilateral tolerance? You're correct. All of these letters identify a unilateral tolerance. Click the right arrow to continue.
A unilateral tolerance must specify all allowable variation in the positive direction. You're correct. Click the right arrow to continue. ASME Y14.5 states, all limits are absolute. In other words, the last significant digit of a dimension or tolerance is followed by zeros. If you want to determine part acceptance, compare the measured value directly to the drawing specification. Any deviation outside the drawing specification signifies an unacceptable part. Which actual measured hole size is within the dimensional limits shown on the drawing? You're correct. The hole size of 8.469 is within the dimensional limits of 8.21 and 8.47. Click the right arrow to continue. A basic dimension is indicated by enclosing a dimension in a rectangle. The blue arrows point to the basic dimensions on this drawing. The formal definition for a basic dimension is, a basic dimension is a theoretically exact dimension. Basic dimensions have two uses. Basic dimensions may be used to describe the theoretical exact size, location, orientation, or form of a part surface, and basic dimensions may be used to describe datum targets. Examples of each use are shown on the following pages. Where basic dimensions are used to describe part features, they must be accompanied by geometric tolerances to specify how much variation is allowed for the part features. There are a few places where basic dimensions are implied on engineering drawings. Some examples are a zero distance, a 90 degree angle, and a 180 degree angle. You'll learn more about basic dimensions in the lesson on GD&T rules. Title block or general tolerances do not apply to basic dimensions. Where basic dimensions are used to define gauge elements, like the basic dimensions locating the datum target shown on this drawing, they're not accompanied by geometric tolerances. Tolerances for gauge elements are not usually specified on product engineering drawings. They are specified on gauge drawings or in gauging standards. The dimensioning of datum targets is explained later in this course. Title block or general tolerances do not apply to basic dimensions that define gauge elements on product drawings. The three types of notes used on engineering drawings are general notes, local notes, and flag notes. See labels 1, 2, and 3. General notes and flag notes are located in the notes area of a drawing, which should be labeled with the heading Notes. In this example, the notes area is in the upper left corner of the drawing. On a multi-sheet drawing, the notes are typically placed on sheet 1. Use a general note when the note applies to the entire drawing. In this example, notes numbered 1, 2, and 4 are general notes. Always number general notes and flag notes as a single listing. A general note applies to specific points on a drawing. You're correct. General notes are not numbered. You're correct. Click the right arrow to continue. Flag notes are notes that are located with the general notes, but apply only at specific areas or points on a drawing. Identify the flag note with a flag note symbol. Place the symbol around the note number in the notes area to indicate that it applies at specific points on the drawing. Then, indicate the flag note symbol, including the note number at each point of application. A flag note only applies to the areas or points indicated. In this drawing, the note number 3 is a flag note. The triangle symbol is used to indicate that it's a flag note. The red circle in the middle of the drawing shows where the flag note applies to the part. Local notes are located at the specified area or point of application on a drawing. 
When creating a local note, don't include it in the listing of general or flag notes. A requirement specified by a local note only applies to the specific area or point indicated. In this figure, both sides is an example of a local note. View titles and scales are not considered local notes. A flag note can only apply to one place on a drawing. You're correct. A local note may not be shown in the notes section of a drawing. You're correct. A view title is considered a local note. You're correct. Click the right arrow to continue. As the use of CAD models continues to increase, some people feel that solid models don't need to use dimensions or tolerances. They think it's not necessary to specify dimensions and tolerances since the model is precise, the parts are produced directly from the model, and the parts have minimum variation. I call this nominal thinking, and it has several flaws. First, the major source of variation of a part is not the method used to create a drawing or solid model. Part variation occurs from a variety of sources. Part factors, rigidity, size, cleanliness, material, heat treat, etc. Operator, setup of the part on the machine, clamping sequence and forces, machine adjustments, etc. Machine tool, speeds, feeds, wear, cleanliness, temperature, etc. Fixture, tolerances, wear, location, deflection, cleanliness, etc. Tooling, tolerances, sharpness, wear, deflection, etc. Measurement, gauging methods, operator error, environmental factors, measurement uncertainty, etc. Without dimensions and tolerances, there is no method to communicate the allowable variation, make engineering calculations, inspect the part to determine fitness for use. CAD models require dimensions and tolerances. You can indicate the dimensions and tolerances on a separate engineering drawing or document associated with the model as CAD file elements that are associated to the model in accordance with Y14.41. Why do CAD models require tolerances? You're correct. All of these answers are reasons that CAD models require tolerances. Click the right arrow to continue. These topics are recommended for additional study to improve your understanding of dimensions, tolerances, and notes used on engineering drawings. You have just completed the lesson on dimensions, tolerances, and notes used on drawings. If you're not confident in your understanding of these topics, review the lesson information before proceeding. Close this window to exit the lesson.